This video is sponsored by Squarespace. There's no one exercise that's gonna get you flexible. And likewise, there's no one program that's gonna help you reach your flexibility goals. But there are training principles and any successful flexibility program employs them. Today I wanna to share with you that golden rule of gains. And that's strength through a full range of motion combined with length through that same range of motion. There's a few different ways in which we can interpret this rule. We're going to start with a zoomed out overview and look at the big picture. And then we're going to zoom in and look at the details of how you can apply it, including a full body example at the end of this video. It's important first that we want to train our strength through a full range of motion. This doesn't need to be anything particularly fancy. It can be basic movements, squats, push-ups, pull-ups, preparing our body making sure the tissues are strong is going to be the essential first step to building more flexibility. This doesn't mean that stretching is useless as a beginner. It's very effective. However, we need to understand that the stretch feeling, restriction of movement is a protective one. A lot of the times this protective element is because we're weak in a range of motion, not that just the tissue is stiff. Stretching also helps us reassure the body that we're gonna be safer as we go further into a position but strength training gives us all of those previous benefits and more. It's gonna help improve muscle mass, it's gonna help condition the tendons, the connective tissue around the joints, which gives a lot of benefit. And it's also gonna be the most bang for your bucks, so the most time efficient way to get both these strength and flexibility gains, as long as you're performing it through a full range of motion. That's the important part. That's the more overview approach of the practice. Let's zoom in a little bit and have a look at how we apply flexibility within a training session. Very simply, we do this the same rule, strengthen, then lengthen. Do your strength training, ideally through a full range of motion, and then finish up your training session with some flexibility work. It can be that simple, it doesn't mean to be a lot. Usually this makes the most sense to combine it with whatever you're training. If you're doing an upper body day, finish with some stretching or flexibility drills for the pecs and the lats. If you're doing lower body, look at developing the hamstrings or the hip flexors. It doesn't need to be complicated, strengthen, then lengthen. So, so far we've looked at a general and a broad overview of getting a little bit more flexible for your average person. Do some strength training, then we're combining it with some passive stretching, and that's gonna get most people to the level that I would recommend, which is being able to do a full range of motion squat, being able to lift your arms overhead, and being able to touch your toes. That's gonna get most people where they wanna be. However, we can go a little bit more specific now and develop more advanced flexibility practices. So when it comes to advanced flexibility skills, I'm referring to the big five. This is the pike, the bridge, the front split, the middle split, and the pancake. When we want to develop these, we're gonna be a little bit more specific about how we approach our flexibility training. We're gonna use that same principle, but now we're gonna focus on that exercise level of practice. We're gonna choose an exercise which is strengthening the range of motion and an exercise which is lengthening the range of motion. When it comes to strengthening, we can focus on the agonist or the antagonist. The agonist being the muscle that's being stretched and the antagonist being the opposing muscle. We're gonna focus here primarily on getting the antagonist strong and then lengthening the agonist. When trying to increase flexibility, it's easier to access more range of motion when our body isn't actively resisting it. We can do this by holding a passive stretch and simply waiting out this stretch reflex. The reason we strengthen the antagonist first, strengthen then lengthen, is that it helps us take advantage of reciprocal inhibition. This is gonna reduce the stretch reflex and allow us to gain more range. This essentially happens in most movements where one side of the joint shortens, the other side of the joint has to lengthen and this is how this relaxation happens. We can do this by working the antagonist and then combining it with the lengthening and the stretching. As we wanna get stronger, you wanna treat this first exercise the same as strength training. Think 20 to 40 seconds total time under tension. This can be done as broken isometric efforts. So hold, rest, hold, rest until you hit that allotted time or we can perform it like we would with any other strength training and perform it for reps, but as always, through a full range of motion. Next, we have lengthening. This is the simpler bit. We want to just use the range of motion that we're aiming to improve. 
and we can do this actively or passively. If we're doing it actively, let's go down the strength training route that we've just been doing and perform it for reps, such as a Jefferson curl to improve hamstring flexibility. The important thing when we're performing this exercise is that as we approach the stretched position of the exercise, we're gonna pause for a few seconds and actually take advantage of it to increase our flexibility. We can also actively lengthen the position statically by performing an isometric hold, such as this long lunge for improving our hip flexor or hip extension flexibility. We have performed something called a yielding isometric, which as we go over the length of the hold, we go deeper into this position and access more range of motion. Finally, we can do this more passively. This involves simply holding a stretch that we're working towards our target position, such as the front split, and I'm using a yoga block to measure my progress. To make the most of this position, we can use contract relax stretching. And I've actually got a video that goes much more into detail. So if you want to learn more about that, I'll link in the description down below. So that's the combination, strengthen, then lengthen. As promised, here is the full body example. And again, we're going to go through the big five, bridge, pike, front split, middle split, and pancake. Because this is much like strength training, you want to perform it for a few rounds, one to three times per week and they can easily be fitted in with your normal training. And again, we go back to that prior strength and then lengthen example where we do our strength training first, and flexibility work at the end of the session. If you want full details on how to do this and how I personally apply this, then check out my programs available in my app and I'll put a link to my website in the description down below. And that website is powered by today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a versatile online platform that helps you create a beautiful website. It's something that I've used for the past six years to help power my business. It can help you generate revenue through members only content. You can manage your members and you can communicate directly with your audience using things such as email campaigns. It's what I use for my monthly newsletter, The Archetype. You can go to squarespace.com. Dot com? Did I say that right? You can go to squarespace.com to get your free trial and create your website. And when you're ready to do your launch, go to this link and you'll get 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Have a strong week.